Hello friends, welcome to the next lecture. In this lecture, we are going to study about CMAC, that is Cipher Based Message Authentication Code. In the previous lecture, we have learned about HMAC, which is Hash Based Message Authentication Code. Now, this is the other method of MAC functionality. <music> So, message authentication codes are based on the block ciphers that we all know very well. And we have to look at the two MACs that are based on the use of the block ciphers mode of operations. Out of that, the first one is data authentication algorithm that is DAA and the other one is cipher based message authentication codes. C MAC. So to begin with DAA, DAA is based on DES, that is Data Encryption Standard, has been one of the most widely used MACs for a number of years. The algorithm is both FIPS public publications and ANSI standard. However, as we discussed subsequently, the security weakness in this particular algorithm have been discovered and it is being replaced by the newer and stronger algorithms. Data authentication algorithm, as I said, is widely used MAC based DES CBC, that is data encryption counter block chaining mode of block cipher modes of operations. It sends final block as a MAC or left M bits for final block of the final block. It is necessary. The final block is padded on the right with zeros to form full 64-bit block. So the algorithm can be defined as using the cipher block chaining as it is said mode of operation with an initialization vector of zero. We all know that initialization vector is being used in the block cipher mode of operation wherein CBC is used. And that initialization vector can be then considered as zero. The data to be authenticated are grouped into contiguous 64 blocks. As here we can see the D, D2, D3, Dn, they can be considered as 64 different bit blocks. If necessary, the final blocks, as it is mentioned here, if necessary, the final block is padded on the right with zeros to form a full 64 bit block. So using DES encryption algorithm E and a secret key K, a data authentication code DAC for DAA is calculated as it is shown here. That is O1 is equals to E K of D, O2 is equals to E K D2 XOR with O1 that is the first output. O3 then E K D3 XOR of the previous output and so on. So this is the diagrammatic representation of data authentication algorithm wherein we can see that D1 bits are undergoing the encryption process with the DES. For this encryption, it is utilizing 56 bits of key which gives the output. O1 as 64 bit and as it performs on the working functionality of CBC it then the output is being given as the input for the exhorting of the next step that is for the D2 this output is exhorted with the D2 then it undergoes DES encryption process with the 56 bit key to give you the another output and this is why it follows cipher block chaining mode of operation of the block cipher and this is only the working functionality of data authentication algorithm now we will be seeing cipher based mode of authentication or cipher based message authentication code cipher based message authentication code is also the block cipher based MAC algorithm 
as we've mentioned that DA has widely adopted uh, in uh, the government and the industry only the messages the it has one vulnerability or we can say it has one restriction DAA has one restriction wherein only messages of one fixed length of MN bits are processed where we can consider the N is nothing but the cipher block size and M is a fixed positive integer. It has noticed that given CBC MAC that is a cipher block chaining mode of operation of a one block message X suppose say T is equals to MAC of KX where that is message authentication code has been implemented with a key on the plain test message block x the adversary immediately knows the cbc mac for the two block messages since these once again since this is for the only once that is for the t only one t has been calculated so later the scientists demonstrated that this limitation could be overcome using three keys one key of length k to be used at each step of the cipher block chaining and two keys of length b will then be used in the cipher block length where length b is nothing but the cipher block length so this proposed construction was refined by the other two scientists iwata and rusova so that the two n bits could the two n bits keys just listen this very carefully two n bit keys could be derived from the encryption key rather than being processed separately and this refinement was then adopted by nist which is then considered as cipher based message authentication mode message authentication code mode of operation and this is then used with AES and tri triple DES. It is specified, is specified in NIST special publication. Now, the, the mode of operation fixes the security deficiencies of CBC MAC, CBC MAC, wherein we can say that C1 is calculated as EK for the M1. C2 is then again calculated with the previous output which we get from C1. Then C3 is calculated and so on till the last block message. Where T here is considered as the message authentication code. Also it is referred to as the tag. T length is nothing but B length of T. MSBX that is the S leftmost bits of the bit string that is X. So this way, the CMAC, that is a cipher-based message authentication works. We all know that for AES, the bit size is 128. For triple DES, the uh, bit size is 64. And the message is divided into N blocks. Here, the algorithm makes use of K bit encryption key and B bit of constants. So for AES, the key size, we all know that it, it, it differs. That is, key size is 128, 192 or 256. And for triple DES, the key size is 112 or 168. So CMAC is then calculated with these equations, which is given in this slide. CMAC is then calculated with these equations. This is the diagrammatic representation of C Mac, wherein we can see that the first one is the message length in integer multiple of block size, and the second figure gives you the message length where, where non-integer multiple of with the non-integer multiple of block size. So, so we, we here we can see that whatever the encrypted output we get, then be considered as the input for the next step wherein we can see the XORing functionality has been taken place and then it utilizes the key at the end again it uses the key 
for the XORing functionality at the last step and then the output which we get again undergoes the encryption process to give us the MSB of T length. We have already seen the MSB of T length significance and the second figure gives you the message length which doesn't have integer multiple of the block size but the functionality of both the parts or both the variants is same. Now the advantages of CMAC. CMAC type of the message authentication codes can use existing encryption functions. And encryption functions have the properties that resist pre-image and the collision attacks, which is a very useful advantage of CMAC. This advantage it has encryption algorithm particularly when chained can be much slower than the hash algorithm it is very obvious that when whenever the chaining mechanism is used in which the output of the previous step is being is then being given as the input for the next step then the processing speed decreases which makes the performance of the algorithm to somewhat slower than the other hashing algorithms so that can be then considered as one of the uh, disadvantage of cmac the cmac operations then proceeds like the difference except that the different b bits and the k2 bits that except the k2 and the k1 bits and these particular mode of operation this particular mode of cmac operation then becomes the advantageous part for the cmax functionality because then at the end the leftmost bits are then padded and the leftmost bits of the bit string then provides you leftmost bit when they are padded and when you get the complete output it provides you the strongest mode of the security thank you guys i just hope that you might have got the concept of cmac and why the cmac concept was introduced because of the weakness in daa that also we have covered i just hope that you might have got this concept please repeatedly i tell that please refer the reference books also for going through the concepts and for learning them very effectively. Thank you.